As a Lovecraft fan, one of the series I can't believe that I haven't covered yet is the Reanimator series, based on the book's uh, Herbert West Reanimator. So I figure today is as good a day as any to fix that situation. So we're going to go cover that, and we're going to go around town and check out some of these famous film locations to see where this movie was shot back in the 80s. And uh, I've got, you know, got, got my camera, got, got my notes, um, although one of these just says... Uh, Timeline dead. Details later. The experiments began back in 1985 with Reanimator in Zurich. That's actually right here, just outside downtown Los Angeles at Loyola High School. Loy Loyola. Loyola High School. As young Herbert West is found injecting his professor with a syringe. But his eyes burst as West says that the doses was too large. And then, huh, wait a minute. Am I watching Reanimator or Psycho? The theme was composed by Richard Band, brother of Charles Band, and he says the similarity is no coincidence, and he based the theme on Psycho's score, and there was supposed to be a credit at the end acknowledging the inspiration that was left out. We're then in Miskatonic Medical School in Massachusetts, and Miskatonic U was a fictional school that appeared in several Lovecraft stories, but Miskatonic University is actually right here in West Los Angeles. We meet Dan Kane, med student, and the school's dean, Dean Halsey, and West is now going to school here. There's also Dr. Carl Hill, esteemed teacher there, and it's said that West studied under the guy that died in the intro, Hans Gruber. No, not that Hans Gruber. Dan's dating the Dean's daughter, say that five times fast, and has a poster for Stop Making Sense on his wall. That came out in 84, so we're at least past that. And West takes up Dan's offer for a housemaid. West and Hill butt heads and, that, that'll be funny later, and they visit Dean Halsey's house and oh, look at that. There it is. And then they head back to Dan's house. Oh, and here's that one. Uh, it's looking, looking a little different now. They find little Rufus dead in the fridge, and West reveals that his formula can restore the dead, and they bring him back. They conduct another experiment with a human bringing that guy back, and he kills Halsey. Meg has a Time magazine that's from December of 84, and judging from everyone's clothing, I don't think it's winter in Massachusetts, so I think it's likely that we're in 1985 then, and the film is in real time, possibly. They reanimate the Dean, who, um, uh, doesn't take it well, but Hill discovers West's secret, so he's decapped. Herbs decides to try his reagent on him, animating the head and body separately, which gets loose and uses its control of the Dean to kidnap Meg, leading to the film's most infamous scene of, well, uh, giving, um, giving head. I guess that David Gale neglected to tell his wife about the scene in question, so when they went to the screening, she stormed out while screaming at him. There's then the final confrontation in the morgue where Hill has animated all the corpses there and controls them, but Halsey crushes Hill's head. West gives Hill's body an overdose, which then apparently animates every part of his body, and is strangled by intestines, and Halsey is torn apart. Unfortunately, Meg is killed, so Dan uses the reagent, ending on a cliffhanger. A sequel took five years, but finally happened in 1980 with Bride of Reanimator, which starts in Peru and says that it's now eight months later. So possibly later in 85, then or likely bridging into 86. West and Kane are helping out an award there to continue their experiments, but what about Meg? How is West alive? Well, apparently there was originally a scene in the hospital that was deleted showing that Meg had an adverse reaction to the reagent and that Herbert survived because Hill... He didn't have the guts. A lot of Fachina is here, uh, but then the boys head back to work in a hospital back in Massachusetts. We don't know how much time has passed in between the opening and this, but you'd have to assume that I guess it'll be like at least a month or so, as they seem to be right back into their previous roles. 
there's a detective investigating the massacre from the ending of the last film, and he has Hill's head that he says was found in a circus sideshow. They look at a bunch of the specimens for that night, and they're all marked as 87, and one says July, so it would seem as if that's when they're saying the first movie took place. So if this is eight or nine months later, then we're in 88 now? They're in a new house and um, there's a mausoleum next to a cemetery and Herbie has now moved on to making little jigsaw animals and he has Meg's heart. And Ernest here is reading a magazine called UFO that was from 1989. So it's possible that that is our year here. Weirdly though, although the date on that magazine is 89, this film was shot in 88, but then sat on the shelf for two years before being released. So I think the dating on the magazine was ahead of time? Or the UFOs time traveled it. Dr. Graves here revives Hill's head and Francesca shows up as the detective says that eight months ago the massacre happened. So there was very little time between the opening and this. So if that were July of 87, then this is likely spring of 88 then. One of the reanimated from the first film's end was the cop's wife, and the guys are building Meg a body, and there's a bottle of Chianti from 1987, so yeah, you know, pa past that. And West is forced to kill the detective, and oddly, Hill now has the ability to mentally command any of the dead, including the recently revived Chapman. And the boys reanimate their Frank and Meg while Hill and his undead army descend upon the house. Megenstein becomes despondent and pulls out her own heart and falls apart due to tissue rejection, but Hill is here since he's <laughs> surgically added bat wings to his head. Yes, that's a thing. The whole building collapses, crushing Hill and West, but Dan and Francesca escape, although Hill apparently survives. A minor note, and not in continuity, but a fun joke is that one year later in 1991, Jeffrey Coombs appeared in the film The Giver, playing a character named Dr. East. No relation, I'm sure. The trilogy didn't complete for another 13 years until 2003's Beyond Reanimator, which begins with a couple of kids being attacked by a reanimated man, and it's one of the escaped subjects from the finale of the last film. West turns out to be alive and is arrested and it jumps ahead 13 years. So we would be in 2001 then. Herbert's in prison and has been since that fateful night, but he's still trying his experiments and there's a new doctor on board named Howard Phillips. Get it? A creepy warden and Elsa Pataki from Snakes on a Plane, the movie that everyone in the world decided was a meme because of the silly title and talked about it nonstop until they saw it and said, oh, that was just a normal movie and then promptly forgot about it. If you're wondering why so many people seem to have an accent, it's because this movie was shot in Spain, although I suppose it's supposed to still be set in the US. Howard is one of the kids from the beginning and he has some reagent and it's revealed that Dan turns state's evidence on West and yeah, it's the Arkham Penitentiary. So it's supposed to be Massachusetts still and West and Phillips start working together. And then there's this damn newspaper. First of all, it's reporting on the chaos at the ending of the first film and contains what appears to be West doing blue steel, but it has a date and it's just blurry enough that I can't make it out. But it does say Monday, October 26th, which is how that fell in 87, which would match what I thought earlier. But this doesn't look like a seven. It looks rounded like an eight or a six, but it's not clear enough to make the call. So I'm sticking with what I have. So West has determined that the reason he has problems with reanimation is that he's missing what's called NPE, an energy from a living organism. And the warden kills Laura, so they bring her back. But then they kill the warden to use his NPE for her, which has complications as she starts acting like him. And then there's a prison riot, and Herbs uses the rat NPE for the warden, which makes him all ratty, while Laura has her own uh, side effects. 
This guy shoots up Reagent while still alive, which by the way, was a plot point of the first movie that was cut out. West would shoot up his own stuff. But this guy takes too much and he melts down, but still wants more. Chaos is all over with the warden getting electrocuted and Laura getting beheaded, driving Phillips crazy. West escapes, heading off into the unknown, but sadly never to be seen again in this version of the character. There were several attempts to keep the franchise going though, even though if they never came to fruition. One of them was the Island of Reanimator, which would be a takeoff of the whole Island of Dr. Moreau, of course, and the second was the one that's the most talked about, which is House of Reanimator, which was actually a discarded concept for the second film in which West is put to use in the White House, reanimating the president. This was during the George W. era and the script featured both West and Kane once again. There was, however, a new version in 2017 from Italy entitled Herbert West Reanimator, and this was completely unconnected to the previous films and was just a new version of the original stories as they are now public domain. Herbert West is this heavy beardy guy whose daughter dies so he uses the reagent to bring her back with expected results and he's forced to kill her again. And yeah, this is way heavier in tone as Herbert realizes that he's only bringing back the bodies and not the souls and he thinks he makes it work with his daughter but she's clearly different now, like, like murdery different. And then it gets very metaphysical because in this film's universe, when you die, you go to this big dark void and then, um, follow me here. I think West's daughter transforms into a man. West Jr. is a villain and this one's certainly not a horror comedy and way more about the existential afterworld stuff. So if you're expecting a romp, you're not gonna get it. It's really artsy and strays pretty far from the source material, but it's still pretty interesting. It ends with West Jr. fighting Eleanor for possession of her body, and she seemingly wins banishing Jr. to the land of souls, I, I think. There's been several attempts to bring the character back in various films in the US. A movie called Anti-Human was slated for 2017 and then changed its name to Herbert West Reanimator, but I guess was also called Reanimator Evolution at one point, and Jonathan Scotchy was attached for a while but dropped out, and the film was bumped and nothing has been heard from it since, but it is it still has an IMDB listing saying that Brad Dorif is in it. There was a weird thing way back in 2009 in which they were also trying to bring him back in a Buffy style TV series called Herbert West Reanimator. And it looks like it would have followed that old CW or UPN or whatever style from that era. The casting call referred to Herbert as the teenage Dr. Frankenstein for the new millennium and a dark, shy, somewhat sexy young man. So, so that should give you the vibe that they were going for. In 2020, a remake of Castle Freak, another Lovecraft adaptation by Stuart Gordon came out that suddenly becomes about Yogg sothoth in, in the end and ends on a cliffhanger. Uh, and then the, it has a post credit scene that goes for the creation of an MCU style shared Lovecraft universe by introducing a new version of West and his reagent. Then, in 2021, Full Moon released Resonator Miskatonic U, directed by William Butler, and it was their remake of From Beyond, yet another Gordon-helmed Lovecraft adaptation, and much like Castle Freak, ends on a To Be Continued, and that To Be Continued features yet another West, this one possibly different than the one in Castle Freak, because even though Charles Band was involved with both, they were put out by different companies and seemed to differ in their portrayal of the events and characters. A sequel is releasing soon, or, or possibly has already by but by the time that this video is up, called Beyond the Resonator, in which West and the Reagent play a bigger part, and then we'll have a final act a little later this year with an entry called Curse of the Reanimator. There's plenty of West out there, including comics from Adventure Publications, which had an adaptation comic, and then a prequel, and then some more recent comics from Dynamite that saw him go up against Evil Dead's Ash. 
He appeared in Hack and Slash and sort of appeared in a slightly altered form in Alan Moore's Lovecraft Love Fest Providence. Parody versions have shown up all over in video games, but most importantly, uh, because it's sort of official, considering it was on the Beyond Reanimator DVD, is Dr. Reanimator's music video, Move Your Dead Bones. It's a song that really captures the tone of the film. Like if I were picturing a theme song for the movie in my head, this is what it would sound like. So there you have it, uh, four movies, uh, two different continuities, three in one, one in the other, and they tie together pretty well, actually, not, not, too, not too bad. There's a couple of things in there that aren't 100% that don't make total sense, but for the most part, yeah, uh, they work out pretty well. And these are great movies. Uh, I love, I love the original trilogy. Um, first one is one of the best horror movies of the 80s. It's so freaking good. The sequels are pretty good. Um, I, the third one's a little iffy, but it's still really enjoyable. And I did. I liked the Italian version. It, uh, it, it was, it's different. If you go in expecting something unlike what you've already seen, then you're going to be pleasantly surprised. And the reanimator, I, you know, I would love to see more. I'd love to see more. Uh, I'd be okay with, a, I don't want to say a remake, but I'd rather see somebody reinterpret the source material in a different way. Uh, would be great. G give me more reanimator. Just make sure that you've got a guy with a syringe full of green goop. That's all I need. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more, if you want to see more videos, if you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments. If you like when I go to these locations, let me know that down in the comments. Just put something down in the comments. It's, it's totally fine. Um, obviously, hit the like button on the video if you enjoyed it. If you like what you see on the channel, think about subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell to get notifications about when new videos come out. And also maybe go to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash movie timelines. You can help put me through medical school. I'd appreciate that. Um, yeah, these guys do that and they're awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. And, uh, you know, just keep on watching these videos because there'll be another one very, very shortly.